morning. Welcome to my channel, Tina I Make. Um, today, we are in the kitchen. This is a little bit of a mess, not too bad right now. But I'm going to try out some contact paper for my countertops. It's what it's specifically for. I ordered it on Amazon. I bought um, three rolls of this design. The three rolls I ordered should be enough. Um, I don't have a very large kitchen. I also got this, um, this, a, um, this wallpaper smoothing toolkit. It's like five bucks on Amazon. It comes with two different smoothers and a like an exacto knife and some extra blades which i have stuff like this already for my cricut but it's much smaller so i thought i would get larger ones hopefully make my life easier this is probably the one i'll use the most I'm imagining anyway. Um, what this one says gentle scraper or smooth. You know what it says? Yeah. It's got like a, a little foam piece on there. Now, I'm still a little up in the air about what way I want to run the contact paper. It obviously it's not big enough to cover the counter in one, like, there's going to be seams. I just don't know if it would be better to run it long this way or run short pieces this way. If this way, obviously, would just give me one big seam all along the back here. But, I don't know. I, know, I feel like it would be easier to run smaller pieces. It's just, I don't know how bad the seams are going to show and whether or not it's going to look bad. And I've watched definitely other videos and tutorials of people using it. And I even helped my friend put some on her counter. And the seams are slightly noticeable, but like if you're standing in the distance looking, you can't see them. So, she used um, the marble one, which is really popular um, online. It's got tons and tons of reviews, and she said that one so far has been fantastic, except obviously not to put any heat on it, because they forgot about that and used an uh, air popper on it, and she said it kind of like damaged it a little bit in that area, but she said it wasn't bad. So, first things first, have to clear my counters off and give them a good cleaning. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I should really record that process. I don't think I'm going to. I'll be back when I'm done with that. Okay, so here is another step that needs to be taken. If you have... Okay, so I ran a bead of caulk between say that word so weird silicone caulk between the window seal and this little like backsplash lip thing attached to the countertop um previously because I was tired of water getting in there when I would do dishes because it's like the tiniest little crack so I'm using this little like craft knife exacto blade to just remove that out before I put the um, contact paper on because I want it to be able to go all the way in between that and then afterwards I will probably go ahead and caulk around the windowsill there again and around the sink just to make it more look more finished. Now that is something that I did not think to do is buy some white caulk. Um, 
so that's something I'll do at a later date that won't be in this video. But here I am laying the first piece down and I just laid it on top of it, left an inch or so of overhang on each end, cut it right off. On the back there's a little grid left. Le I'm sorry. There's little <laughs> grid lines to help you cut straight lines. I've been having a lot of dental work done lately and with that my uh, TMJ has flared up a little bit so I'm probably going to stutter and stammer a little bit because it causes a little bit of like spasms. It causes my jaw to spasm here and there. So um, yeah. So I just peeled up the end, started on the little top of like the little backsplash area and I'm just using the smoother as I go just peel a little bit of it at a time and smooth that's it um, that's really all there is to this as far as laying it on the counter Doing the sides is a whole nother story, and I'm sorry, I know you can't really see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of snipping the edges there so that um, I can fold it around the sides. And something I did, I don't know if I cut it wrong or like not in the right spot, but there was going to be this little spot right along the edge there that was not going to be covered. So I just cut a small piece off of the contact paper and put it under there before I started doing this part. Now I'm taking my blow dryer and I'm using it to go around the edges because what the blow dryer does is you just hit it real quick with some hot air. It once it warms up a little bit it starts to almost it's almost like it shrink wraps around the edges. You don't want to do it too much because you can burn it and cause it to like actually melt. But um, that blow dryer is, it really makes a difference. Using that or just like folding it and pressing it down and smoothing it, you can really see a difference once you run the blow dryer across it. I know you probably can't tell in the video, but if you ever decide to do something like this yourself, you'll, 100% see a difference using the blow dryer. It's, um, and this isn't even, this isn't like an expensive blow dryer or anything. This is like a cheap one from Walmart that costs like, I don't know, like 20 bucks. But yeah, so I'm just going to blow dry all the edges, use my hand and smoother on and off. to um yeah get that wrapped tight around the sides there and um you know snip your corners now I'm pressing it around the corner and I'm gonna trim that up with my scissors and yeah just keep smoothing everything down Use the smoother. You're going to get less bubbles. My, my friend that I helped lay this with, she didn't have any of those smoothers. We just used um, like, a, like a card, like a credit card type of thing or like an ID card. And it works, but it's so small and you're doing such a large space that hers had quite a bit of bubbles in it when we're done they weren't like super noticeable in most spots but I honestly I do have a few tiny bubbles in some areas it's hard to tell because of the the um the print on this but it was nowhere near the issues that we had doing hers which I think in large part was because of the smoother I have. 
it really hits a much larger area than a credit card does, obviously. And the smooth one is, I really like that one too. The one, the, the one with the little, it's like a foam piece or a felt piece around the edge of it. That one works really good too. Something you don't want to do those, you don't want to take, whether you use a credit card or one of these smoothers, you do not want to take it and run it really hard diagonally along the where the backsplash meets the actual countertop there because if you do it too many times it actually cuts the contact paper um so yeah you don't want to do that too hard those little corner areas like that ba a back and forth motion is what causes it I did it in one little spot on accident it wasn't noticeable at all, but you're trying to keep this sealed pretty good so you're not getting water underneath it because it's, you know, it's your counter, your kitchen counter. If you're someone who cooks and cleans on it constantly, you don't want things to be able to seep through it. It's, um, this was not that hard. Um, I, and that blade, the blade there, any kind of blade, it could be a small craft knife like that, or like a box cutter is crucial. And it's crucial that it's sharp because, and I didn't, I mean, I don't have it in here, but this one got dull a little bit. It got dull about halfway through and I was really struggling to cut the contact paper with it and I changed the blade out and it was so much better so if you feel like it's, it's make sure you have extra blades and if you feel like it's starting to get dull change it because what it's going to do when you try to use it and it's dull is it's going to skip so you'll have little spots where it cuts and then little spots where it doesn't or and or it's going to get caught and tear it instead of cutting it and you don't want that It's really the same thing for this whole thing. Um, smooth, 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 smooth as much as you can. Fold it around the edging, blow dry it, smooth some more, blow dry it a little more, smooth some more, just repeatedly until it's you think it's on there good enough. And then run your blade along like this carefully because you don't want to cut your wall. And oh, so satisfying to peel that off. It really was. It's, um, yeah, it was way easier than I thought. Sorry, I don't have a lot of explaining to do. And, um, you know, there's only so much I put in here because I wanted to keep the video on the shorter end, which it's still really not that short. So to do this, so I got up to the sink and, um, I decided I was going to run the pieces like horizontally long ways down the sink. That way I was just using one piece across the front and the back. Cause one, I was trying not to waste a lot of it. And two, I thought it'd be better to not have seams like in the middle right in front of the sink because that's probably where you're going to like get the most water. So yeah, I just smoothed it on like I did on the other parts. This, I, I did, I left more of this in though so you could really see like the edging and the cutting on this just bump it up as far as you can to the sink and um what I did in with this part is I went through and cut it with the scissors a little 
closer to the edge before actually using the blade so that I could smooth it in closer, especially around the round parts. That was a little hard to do. So I kind of blow dry and smooth it as I go. And that seemed to help some. I did get a few little wrinkles right around the corners of the sink, the rounded parts. Like I said, that part was a little, little more difficult to do. Um, and something I may not have mentioned earlier, when you're prepping your counters for it, you know, giving them a good clean, I cleaned them um, three times. The first time I used like an actual like cleaning spray, like a kitchen cleaning spray. And then I went back and cleaned it with soap and water. And then I wiped it down with just a damp rag afterwards to make sure that, try and make sure that I got all the chemicals off or the soap off so that it would adhere good. And something else, um... You're going to have to pull your stove, your fridge, whatever you have over there against the counter out so you can get in there and do the sides if you want it like a complete, um, a finished look. That's what I was trying to say. A more finished look. And, um, you've got to give the sides there a good clean too. I ended up actually... <laughs> cleaning the entire tea of behind my stove and underneath it. I usually do it every couple months anyway, and the last time I did it was in November, I believe. So it was time to do it again. It was a little earlier than normally. I do like every two to three months behind it. But it's done, and it looks better now. So it's something else that I have this spot I'm working on right here that I'm keep going over repeatedly and like grabbing. So what I did is when I folded it down, it wasn't tight enough. And this is what happened when I took the blow dryer over it and it crinkled, it kind of crinkled up kind of like to shrink wrap around the corner because there was this like little bit of extra paper it like has like a really stiff wrinkle. It almost feels sharp. So you want to make sure you're folding those edges down tight before you run the blow dryer over them. Now, visually, it's not noticeable at all. You only feel it when you like lean against it with like, like, like your arm, like actual skin on it, like leaning against like your belly against it to the dishes in the sink. You don't feel it through your shirt, but putting your hand on it or leaning your arm on it, it feels, it feels sharp. Like it feels like hard plastic almost. This part also, um, where these are laminate countertops underneath is not, you know, it's not finished. It's kind of rough feeling. So something I had to do to get it to stick was run the blow dryer down there as well to kind of like shrink wrap it around the bottom of the counter. And here I am putting, sorry I yawned, <laughs> here I am putting the back of the sink on. And this part was, it was a little bit of a struggle. It wasn't super difficult, but it wasn't like super easy either. Obviously the flat parts in the middle of the counter are the easiest because there's not a lot of like folding around corners and stuff to do. And I know I'm kind of like all over the place with this. Sorry, I'm just kind of saying things as I think of them and as I see them. This one, um, something I found that helped with it was to snip the um, right above the like edge of the sink but not onto the countertop just put a couple little snips in there 
so that it, I don't know, it just makes it easier. It does that in sewing too. Sometimes if you put little clips around edges and corners and curves, it helps with the like folding process of the fabric when you're turning fabric. With this, it's kind of being folded in like an L shape because I'm going horizontally across. I'm sorry, I yawned again. <laughs> horizontally across the sink. So it's one long piece having to be folded in like an L. The clips, clipping the edges a little bit there above the sink helped a lot. And it kept getting stuck. <laughs> To the um the sprayer nozzle. It was so frustrating. I cut some of it out. It was so frustrating. It kept getting stuck to that so bad and I couldn't get it smoothed down. <laughs> but this is basically besides the part where it's folded, it's the same as the front. And you just run it along, smooth it as much as you can, trim it to the edge of the sink then smooth it down all the way and then cut it with the exacto and then hit it with the blow dryer again or as well it's um this was definitely a learning process and this part wasn't the hardest part the hardest part is the back corner that I'll um I think I do next I think I cut out everything between that and so this little side, this side right here that I'm on at the moment, see it's got that tiny strip of green still showing. I just cut a skinny, not too skinny, I like it's overlapping a good inch or so on either side. But I just cut a little piece to go right down that. And for the next, um, or the other side, I just did a full piece almost right up against the edge of the sink because I think I cut that out of here for time's sake because I tried to keep the harder pieces to do in here so you could see the more difficult parts of this project. And this was so exciting for me to do because I hate these countertops. We rent our place and... Um, Obviously, we can't make any changes, permanent changes, without the landlord's approval, the owner's approval. So, I really, really, really wanted to try something removable, renter-friendly on the countertops. Supposedly, this is. I guess we'll see whenever I eventually try to take it off either once it gets damaged enough to need to be removed or once it's um, time for me to take it off, time to move out if it lasts that long. We've been in this place for four years now and I don't think we're gonna go anywhere, you know, today or tomorrow anytime soon or within the next year. So, I mean, I'll have to, like, check in with y'all and let you know how it holds up. It's currently been, I think I did this on s Sunday. Yeah, I did this last Sunday and today is Thursday. Almost. And currently it's holding up just fine. So it hasn't been that long. It's been less than a week. There's one little like scratch in it that I don't, I'm not 100% sure how it happened, but it is there. But thankfully it's over a part that's overlapped with two pieces. So it di didn't go through to the actual countertop. Um, so this part right here, this was the hardest part. I couldn't get it straight. I don't know why I decided to do it this way. Because, I don't know, I had this idea that I just needed to keep this piece back here whole. I don't know why. 
but it did not work. It was rough. And you can't see what I'm doing real well. I'm just trying to get it straight this whole time. That's all I'm doing is realizing that it's crooked and fixing it and removing it and not um, being successful in my endeavors. Because it ends up, I end up just leaving it crooked because I get tired of trying to straighten it and it's just not working. And yeah, at this point I'm over it and I'm smoothing it down anyway. If I had to do this over again, I would just keep going the way I was from the sink. And when I got up to this edge, I would just keep going the same way I was from the sink, but stopping and not doing this part I'm doing now and doing that in one, like a separate piece rather than trying to keep it whole with the other walls backsplash. I guess. I don't know what to call it. That's what I'm going to call it for now. That's the backsplash. I don't have like a tile backsplash. I just have the little, that little lip that's attached, attached to the actual laminate. But yeah, this was, I, I really hopped on the struggle bus here and, um, it was a long ride. This piece took me longer than any other part I did. And you can't see what I'm doing half the time, which is a shame because, like I said, this was the hardest part to do. And, um, yeah, I keep having to, like, try and lift the contact paper back up and fix it because it's getting bubbles and wrinkles. So I give up at that point and I decide I'm just going to cut it. So where there were bad wrinkles right there. I took that craft knife or exacto blade, whatever you want to call it. I took it and I ran it right down the middle of the wrinkle seat and I cut like a slit all the way down in my piece so I could smooth it down and just fold it over each other to hide the wrinkles because I was not about to start this over or cut another piece. And it worked. And now that it's done, you can't even tell that I did that there. And that area of my counter doesn't really get used. It's pretty much blocked off, so it's not that big of a deal there as well. But even if it wasn't blocked off, you can't tell. So I did that in like, I don't know, like three or four spots. That's me pointing out where it's folded over. And that I noticed I needed to slice it a little higher up and smooth it down better, which I did. And it worked out fantastically. My mixer sits there in that corner, so my KitchenAid mixer, and so you can't see it at all anyway. This is one thing I think you have to be careful of too is like bad scratches to like not sliding heavy items across your counter. It's like, <laughs> I mean, touching my forehead, like, oh God, what have I gotten myself into? Um, so for my KitchenAid, I actually cut like a little felt pad to go underneath it, just a place under it so that I can slide it out of the corner to use it and not worry about it scratching it up. And my toaster, I put one of the wood cutting boards I own under, or bamboo, might be bamboo, I'm not sure. But I just slid that underneath it for now. Um, I'm not really sure if the toaster gets really on on the bottom when you use it. I don't know. Never stuck my hand under there to see, but just in case. See, I'm still struggling with this piece. The corner there was like a nightmare to do. I just kept having to like snip pieces away and smooth it in and snip more and smooth it. And it was just, it was a complete nightmare to do that spot back there. But the rest of the project was easy. 
So it was not that bad. It was worth the time. It took me, I started this at like, I think like nine in the morning, somewhere between eight and nine. And I got completely done, everything put back. I th think around like three, like two thirty, three o'clock. So that's what, like, it's like six, seven hours ish to do my whole kitchen. Not the shortest project in the world, but not the longest either. Like, I've seen people that have, like, larger kitchens or more countertop space that say it took them two or three days to do something like this on their own. So, it's not bad. Not bad. I was pretty determined to get it done. All that day. Anyway. So, even if I had to stay up all night... I would have gotten it done because I'm sorry. I'm just going to keep yawning through this. Apparently I don't know what's going on tonight. Why I'm yawning so much. So I'm sorry if you can hear every time I yawn, which I'm pretty sure you can. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm a mom of three in order to, to get it quiet enough. For me to do voiceovers, I have to wait till, see, and then the cats are still making noise. I don't know if you heard that. They just knocked something over. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I'm a mom of three. My husband works night shift, so he sleeps upstairs in our bed about half the day. And my youngest has been home from school for the whole week. Because she had a low grade fever. So like. I have to stay up. Pretty late to do voiceovers. Because that's the only time. It's quiet enough in my house. For me to get it done. Without stopping. Ten million times. So I have to wait. Until my kids are all in bed. And my husband leaves for work. Yeah. Anyway. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So that's why I, I guess, why I'm tired tonight. Because it's, like, after midnight already. And, uh, I can't hang anymore. I don't do let's stay up half the night kind of stuff anymore. That's not, it's not my jam. I have to be up early to get kids ready for school. And, like, even on the weekends, they don't really sleep in that often, especially not the youngest one. So, no thank you. All-nighters are not my thing. My idea of a good evening is to lay down and watch a few videos on my phone, fall asleep to some scary stories on YouTube, or to put on a movie I've seen 10 million times and fall asleep in the beginning credits. So that's about how my evenings go, most evening. So, this, this back corner is finally almost done. It's taken 10 million years. It's been not fun. All right, so I went ahead and finished the rest up, which wasn't much. This little side counter here. This is what it looks like completely done. And I'm also going to show you what it looks like with all my stuff put back and, and straightened up. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. I'll let y'all know how it holds up as time goes by. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you want to see more DIY projects. Who knows what will be next. Bye.